Greetings, Lux lovers. Welcome or welcome back. Here we believe in intentional luxury and we're not afraid to invest in pieces that will work for us. So if that resonates with you, then please consider subscribing and stay a while. Today I'm going to be sharing the first item I've bought from luxury designer brands from my youth. And I thought this would be a really fun video, one, for the nostalgia for the folks that are around my age to talk about what luxury buying was like back in our day. But also second, it might be useful for anyone actually at that life stage right now to learn about what could be good starter pieces from each of these brands. And we'll also see what actually withstood the test of time, which are the items that I've sold or gotten rid of, and which are the ones that have stayed with me to this day. And be sure to stick around until the end when I'll share my first ever item I bought from Hermes. So let's begin. The first item I'll share is from Coach. And we're talking about Coach in the 90s. And it is this Coach signature little red bag. It was so cute. It almost looks like a little, you know, pochette now. I think I bought this in high school from Macy's and I was so excited because like I said, it was my first designer bag ever. Eventually I did go on to sell it because I kept it for probably 20 years, but never used it. I just had no purpose for it anymore. Space was getting sparse in our tiny New York City apartment. So this one I did sell on the secondhand market. I would reward myself every summer after a successful internship with a piece from Tiffany and Company's Silver Line. And I did buy the Return to Tiffany's bracelet, then the matching Return to Tiffany's necklace, and then I bought this beautiful bamboo bangle. And while I did sell the necklace and the bracelet, because I just wasn't using them anymore, I did actually hang on to this bangle. So I'm wearing it today, and you can see that it's really a beautiful, solid silver piece. Like this is heavy, we're not talking hollow jewelry. But as you can also see, it's pretty big. Like it's really big on my tiny wrists. So I did con contemplate selling it for a little bit, but I think just out of sentimental value of how hard I worked, I think I'll keep it and pass it down. But as you know, I do love very earthy, nature inspired organic jewelry and this just looks so beautiful the next item i purchased was from prada and this was during my college days and it was a prada nylon shoulder bag i'm pretty sure it's real because i got it off of bluefly.com which i think was then absorbed to overstock.com but i don't think they ever had issues with selling fakes but back in the early 2000s we could have easily been duped and like would never know it but i'll show some pictures here we have the bag in 2004. This was in undergrad. And then also it lasted me all the way through 2009 and beyond. And I have to say, I still have this thing. It is so old and here it is. However, it doesn't have any handles anymore. Like the handles came straight off. The leather loops just gave in and I never brought it anywhere to get it fixed. But here's the little Prada logo the zipper is a little tarnished but if you look in the inside it has the beautiful prada lining and it has one zippered pocket but to me this lining looks good as new like i guess i kept really good care of it and so it looks super clean there's no stains or anything it's just it has no handles and i must have thrown it out because there's no way i was going to sell this on the resale market but I think my rationale was that I could actually keep it as a makeup bag. So I guess from afar, you would never know that it used to be a handbag, but I could definitely keep a lot of good cosmetics in there. So this one is almost 20 years old, given that I probably got it 2003 or 2004. So well done, Prada Nylon. I know you're making a comeback now. And these might be really good pieces to invest in and talk about a good cost per wear. The next item that I purchased, my first purchase from Louis Vuitton was this Speedy 30 in the Demier Abin colorway. And I think this was about 2008. And I love this bag. I felt so special purchasing it. But I have to tell you, when I got it home and started using it, the glazing, which I didn't know what glazing was back then, but now I do, but the glazing on the handles was peeling off like ribbon and I couldn't believe it. And this was my first experience with the brand. So I brought it back. I actually don't remember if they repaired it or if they just gave me a new one, to be honest, but I feel like that just soured the experience from there. And then I eventually did sell it on the secondhand market. But back in my day, this bag was $750. So I think in my mind, I always thought 
that it was around that price. So imagine my surprise when I just checked on the website and I see that it's now over $1,500. So that bag definitely doubled in price since when I bought it. And I had a lot of fun going back into my old pictures and my old records to see if I could see myself using these little luxuries. And you can see here I'm on like a Metro North train and my bag's in my lap. It's super blurry because we didn't have nice cameras like we do now. So this was me loving this bag. And then back in the day, nobody was talking about base shapers or bag inserts. I do clearly remember that bag was just kind of like flopping around whenever I put something heavy in the middle. So I feel like my experience would have been a lot different today if I had this bag now. But as you all know, I'm not a huge Louis Vuitton shopper. I do have some items here and there, but I always wonder if my opinions today are informed by my first very early experiences, even if you know I didn't put two and two together till now. And that's getting pretty deep. My next major luxury purchase was also around 2008, and it was this Cartier Tank Frances watch in the stainless steel small model. And actually, I'm wearing this today, but here you can see um, it's it's beautiful, and this is what it looks like on my wrist. I think it's a really good look, even to this day. And you know what, I've just put it upside down so you can see it on my wrist. But actually the battery has run out because I just don't use this at all. And literally the only watches I own are this, my Apple Watch, and now my Hermes Fancy Watch. So clearly I'm not a watch person, but it is beautiful. It is very subtle. However, it is attention grabbing and I think it served me well I have a lot of pictures of me using this throughout the years, both professionally and personally. What's funny is it was such a big purchase to me back in the day that I even went on the Susie Orman show on her like, should I buy it segment? And she definitely flat out rejected me, but of course I did it anyway. Then my next luxury purchase while I was in grad school was from David Yerman. And it is this David Yerman, I think it's called like the Figaro Station Sterling Silver Necklace. I mean, I guess it's abundantly clear that I have loved double tour things all my life. I mean, clearly we have this long necklace that can be doubled up to be a single necklace. I'm even wearing this necklace and I have my Van Cleef VCA Sweet Alhambra necklace. So this just has been my style all my life. This has definitely withstood the test of time. David Yerman's style of jewelry, you know, there is some intentional tarnish but this isn't ever going to look like super, super shiny and new. And it had these beautiful pearl stations um, at set distances apart. And then the pearls had a silver wrap around it so that the pearls wouldn't fall off. So I feel like the pearls are pretty secure and it just was like a really beautiful professional necklace. And I'll put some pictures here where I've had it really from 2008 and onward. And I have a picture of me in my graduation gown, wearing it and also parties. And if you're enjoying this so far, I'd love for you to consider subscribing. I love pulling together these types of themed videos based on my own luxury experiences to help inform your luxury journey. So if you'd find value in that, I'd love to have you be part of our Lux Loving community. All right, let's finish up this list and get to my first Hermes purchase. My next big purchase was from the brand Chloe and it was the Chloe Parate bag in the medium size in the color rock. This bag is such a blast from the past and I don't know why nobody talks about it anymore. I remember pining over this for so long and then I finally bought it on discount off of guilt.com. I did eventually sell this on on a site called Tradesy, which has now you know, been rolled into Vestier Collective because I simply never wore it but I was obsessed with this bag. I thought this like triangular look was so cool. I thought the color rock was awesome. And it actually looks like a tube now that I look at it to this day. And I even found it on Fashion File for $520. This really brings me back. And then my first Chanel purchase was this Chanel necklace. And I bought this on a Valentine's Day on 57th Street. I love this necklace. And you can see this picture here of me in the boutique signing on the dotted line to buy this. I like wearing it long. I like wearing it doubled up. And I just think this is such a fun piece. And even though it has these like little crystal diamantes, it is very festive. Also can look, you know, I think fairly professional if you pair it with like a plain black dress. And then the fast follow after this, I think in that same year, was my Chanel Executive Surf tote in black and 
Silver hardware, I love this tote. To me, it's very quiet luxury as well um, because you can simply just turn it around and not see the Chanel, but I have straight up worn this to interviews and to work. And I bought this on the pre-love market from eBay. All right, now we're gonna talk about my first purchase from Hermes and it was in 2013 and it was this. 140 by 140 cashmere and silk shawl and this is the Parurs de Maharaja pattern and all that means is adornments of the Maharajas but I will open it up and what's funny is the colorway is very similar to this Chanel sweater that I bought but it's very like reds and greens you know I love a good Hermes shawl and to me it's like never a wasted dime as long as you'll wear them and I know that I'll wear them so it's basically a shawl that has gemstones and pearls as its pattern, and that just screams my taste. So here we go. I think it's beautiful to this day. And what's funny is I bought this for my 30th birthday in 2013, and then I just didn't go to Hermes for five more years. And as I've said in my other videos, in 2018, I walked into the boutique and I got a Birkin 35 with no other pre-spend, and the rest is history. I wore this so much though in those five years, cost per wear was definitely very, very low. And so you can just say this is the shawl that started it all. So thank you to those who've stayed with me to the end. I'd love to know what your first luxury items were. If you'd like to take a trip down your own memory lane, so let us know in the comments. Also, there were a lot more brands I didn't even include here, so let me know if you'd like a part two to this. And these were brands like Tom Ford, Celine, Bottega Veneta, Gucci, Dior, etc. I welcome you to follow me on Instagram if you'd like to see more of how I incorporate these items in my day to day and other luxury moments. If you've enjoyed this video, I invite you to go down the rabbit hole that is my luxury curation playlist, and I'll put that link here. Please like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next video.